Hey there, what is up you guys? I am Jerry Lai and welcome back to my sports photography channel. For those of you joining me for the very first time, I currently serve as the Director of Content and Photography at USA Today Sports. And I have been fortunate enough to have been in the photojournalism industry for over 16 years. My goal for the channel is to help you become a better sports photographer. If you think that I can help you out, hit the like button and subscribe. As a sports editor, I look at a lot of pictures. I also receive a lot of inquiries from prospective photographers who want to show me their portfolios. So today I thought it would be helpful to share some insight into what editors like myself like to see from prospective photographer portfolios. Before I dive a little deeper, let me just say that portfolio reviews are a very important part of the evaluation process. But these days it's really not the only thing that we look for. For one, portfolios when displayed on their own can be a little bit deceptive. Let me explain. A portfolio is a collection of someone's very best work. It will likely be around 20 pictures total. Now what if that photographer has been in the industry for let's say 10, 20 years or so? That's going to be what percentage of their total body of work? Like 0.01%? Even less? Let's be real, if you've been shooting sports long enough, it's going to be pretty easy for you, no matter how good or how bad you are, to cobble together 20 photos so that can impress someone as hardened as me or my colleagues. So these days, editors do need to do their due diligence. We will look you up on Google and perhaps find some of your social media sites. We can then see more of your day-to-day -day style and work on Instagram or Facebook. But most importantly, Looking you up online can help raise any red flags that might be there. Are you perhaps too much of a fanboy? Are you perhaps too vocal politically? Now to be clear, it's okay to be a sports fan and it's okay to have political leanings. But just be very careful that your digital representation doesn't bleed into your real life. So with that disclaimer out of the way, let's pivot back to actually displaying your portfolio and your body of work. Just like writing a resume for any other job, you need to tailor your portfolio to who you're showing it to. For example, if you're looking to photograph for a sports wire service, most of the work you're going to do it probably involves sports action. So a portfolio you show to a wire service editor should showcase just that, mostly action. But additionally, you'll also need to show that you could cover news around the game, such as fan interaction pre-game ceremony, or other athletic milestones. These are important for telling the news story. On the other hand, if you're looking for a team photographer job, the portfolio that you showcase should really focus on that sport or sports that the team participates in. For example, in 2011, I actually applied for a job with the NHL's Chicago Blackhawks. During that interview process, I retooled my entire portfolio for that prospective job and tailored it to showcase only hockey images. But then I actually took that one step further and actually made several sub portfolios showcasing things that a team would look for out of a team photographer, namely celebration and jubilant reaction photos, and then a separate one showcasing fan interaction and PR events. Oh, and in case you were wondering, I actually did get offered that job but I did turn it down, which is why I'm in the position I'm in today. That said, my experience with the Blackhawks does illustrate this point. One single broad portfolio can be a little bit deceptive and doesn't help paint the full picture of your skills. While a broad portfolio does have its place, that's why I don't put a ton of stock into it. It's just too broad of a snapshot. I want to see what someone can do day in and day out. And in fact, part of my standard review process now is to try to find samples of how a person works a single game. I can often find this online or on other agency websites. But if not, I will actually ask for a collection from a single game or two to see how someone operates in normal daily circumstances. It's a much better gauge of how someone thinks and shoots a game. So again, the point of the video is this. It it is important to have a portfolio. It's flashy and is great intro to your work. 
It does give editors a good overall sense of your style and proficiency, but it won't necessarily tell us the whole picture. So just like writing a resume, you do need to target it to your audience a little bit. And depending on the client, it might be worthwhile to create a few sub portfolios as well. And finally, don't forget to clean up your digital signatures and your digital personas on social media. You never know who's looking. I hope that these editor insights really helped you out. And if it did, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button and subscribed. Don't forget to also hit that notification bell so that you could be alerted as to when new content drops. Thank you very much as always for watching today. I will see you all again in a couple of weeks. Stay safe and I will see you then. Bye now.